speaking with me, saying, come up here, and I will show you the things which must take place. That's what we need, my friends. We need a heavenly perspective of the things that are going on in the world around us, things that the Word of God foretold would come to pass, those things which must take place, those things which are taking place even now. That is what this broadcast is all about, discussing the issues of the day, discerning the times in which we live from a biblical perspective and worldview. Good day, everybody. Andy White here. What you are about to hear is the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. And I want to welcome everybody from all across the fruited plain, of course, and all around the spherical globe. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of Open Up the Doors. Hey, I am streaming live over on my Facebook Open Up the Doors page at facebook.com slash faithfm91.7 if you'd like to uh, see it. See it, you know, if you're able to, from not just behind the radio, which way well, you won't see me on the radio, but you will see me on my Facebook page. If you've never if you've never uh, liked my page or subscribed to my Facebook page, please go on over there, facebook.com slash faithfm91.7. Let us know where you are watching from. Do a great big meet and greet over there on, on the live streaming. If you are... Also on the Truth Social platform, you can look me up there on Truth Social at AJ White and follow me over there. If you are outside of the Faith FM broadcast area, the best way to listen to Faith FM is to download the free Faith FM app. We have the app both for the Android platform and the Apple platform, of course. Just look up Faith FM in Sag Harbor and download that app. You can listen to great Christian uh, programming here 24-7 all across the fruited plane i do plan on going to the phones in the second hour write down the phone number now it's first come first serve 631-725-2069 631-725-2069 for the for the, the call-in portion of the broadcast which will be in the 11 o'clock hour all right i think that pretty much sums it up for my preliminaries i just want to say hello to everybody there on facebook thanks for for joining in the, the live stream there. Shoot me your questions, your comments, your inputs, um, even before we go to the phones. And uh, we'll get a conversation going all kinds of various various ways here on this week's edition of Open Up the Doors, as we do every week. Okay, but I want to turn our attention for today's broadcast back a little bit to what's going on in Israel, because a lot of things... A lot of things are flying under the radar. A lot of things aren't being necessarily reported that much anymore. But we cannot, um, we, we we can't be, we can't become compl- uh, complacent and apathetic about what's going on over there in Israel, um, because as as Bible believing Christians, we we know that Israel is is the linchpin of so many things that are happening prophetically in the world. But the the reality is our, or I shouldn't say the re- well, it is a reality. But one of the things that happens when wars and when wars and conflicts conflicts linger on, and the initial concerns and awareness begins to wane, when the shock and awe begins to fade from the headlines to the background, people can quickly become indifferent, disinterested begin to ignore it all as apathy settles in as our daily routine settles in and we're not really thinking about what's going on on the other side of the world when so much that's going on on the other side of the world is so important and that's why god raises up people such as me and many many others to keep you informed but we can't let this 
apathy, this complacency, this disinterested, indifferent attitude affect us when it comes to things pertaining to Israel. That is not a condition nor a position that we should fall into as Bible-believing Christians because, I'll say it again, we know this, God's timepiece, as has often correctly been said, is Israel. God's eschatological plan and blueprint is centered and culminates with Israel, period, full stop. Of course, there are those, I understand, there are those who, who deny that fact. There are those who, have, who want to, in my opinion, really twist and warp the scriptures into an unrecognizable and convoluted mess when it comes to Israel. But that's an argument for another day. That's not my position. But my position really is this. God means what he says and says what he means in his word. I'm a very simple man. So when I read the word of God and I pick it up, when something uh, is meant to be taken literally, I take it literally. Um, I just, I'm very simple that way. God knows how to communicate with the creation that he created. And I, I, I believe what he says in his word, especially, especially when it comes to the nation of Israel. So, and there, and there's, a, the whole Bible really is, is Israel centric. But when, when, when there are passages like this, for instance, I'm just going to give you a, a, a few here to, to get you into my my stream of consciousness of where I'm going here with all of this, but when, when there are passages like Zechariah, two, chapter two verses eight and nine, we need to take them seriously. The prophet said, "For thus says the Lord of hosts, to the nations which plunder you," he's, and he's he's talking to Israel, and he says, "To the nations that are plundering Israel, thus says the Lord of hosts, to the nations which plunder you, he who touches you." touches the apple of his eye for surely i will shake my hand against them says the lord and they shall become spoil for their servants yeah yeah i i believe i believe israel even today is the apple of his eye because the bible says in romans 11 speaking of israel that the gifts and the calling of god are are without repentance you see god knows the the, the end from the beginning god's the author of the book so uh, all those folks who like to say God's not dealing with Israel anymore and take all kind of scriptures out of context or, or spiritualize the Bible away. You know what? You know what? I love you as brothers in the Lord, but you're just, you're just wrong. You're just wrong. Just, just, re just read the word of God and accept it for what it says. And don't try to interpret things that don't need to be interpreted. Okay? For instance, <laughs> Zechariah 12, 9. I take it really seriously. I take it really literally. It shall be in that day. What day? Well, the day of the Lord. There's, a, there's this thing called the day of the Lord that's coming. And the prophecy is simply this. It shall be in that day that I will seek to, what? what what's God going to seek to do? Oh, right there. Destroy. Destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Hey, I'm just, don't get mad at the messenger. I'm just, don't get mad at me, folks. I'm just. I'm just reading what God said, that he's going to seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. That word seek is interesting. It's not like he's just going to like, you know, they're just, they're just going to stumble around, you know, and then, you know, and then fall apart. God's going to actually, and we can read this in other scriptures, and I really don't want to go down a, a bunny trail with, with all of that, but I certainly can take this broadcast in a hundred different directions. But the Bible clearly says in places like Joel and places like Ezekiel that God is actually going to draw all the nations. He's going to draw them. He's going to pull them out to the four corners of the earth, especially the surrounding nations of Israel. He's going to draw them out sp specifically to destroy them, specifically to deal with them in the valley of decision, to sp sp specifically, specifically enter into judgment with them but here is where i want to go with all of that here is what is a growing concern to me and it ought to be to you as well of the danger that we are heading for in this country because the issue for us as a nation as the united states of america that is extremely important and pertinent 
is our government's relationship and standing with Israel. And I want to emphasize our government's relationship and standing with Israel because God deals with nations according to the governments they have. And again, I can go down a bunny trail with that. There, even though the polls say that that 70 to almost 80 percent of Americans are actually, and this is according to the polls, I think this number seems to be a to me a little bit off and a little bit high, but I'm just going to quote a, a poll that I saw the other day. 80% of Americans support Israel, and 80% of Americans uh, support Israel in general and, and, and their war against Hamas. Um, and that's great. If that number is true, it's great. I mean, we're seeing we're seeing the squeaky wheel on the news, so to speak, all the, all the anti-Semitic uh, protests and what's going on. But and I'm not I, I, I'm not I wouldn't I, you know, personally I wouldn't hang my hat on that 80 percent. But that's what the poll said. Having said that, it, it and that's good. But what's really, 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 really important, folks, is how our government, the people in charge, our quote unquote leaders, how they deal with Israel. And like I said, the good news for the moment is if you look at the various polls that have been taken, as I just said, most Americans stand with and support Israel and fight in their fight against Hamas, notwithstanding that loud and vocal anti-Semitic left. The bad news, however, is that this present administration is increasingly standing, is not standing, excuse me, is not standing with Israel and is coming dangerously close to outright betraying them if they haven't already crossed that red line. Now, when 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 Israel was attacked back in October and Biden was uh, publicly saying and seemingly doing all the right things, and, and at the time I said, well, he, pr- I mean, praise God, he is seemingly, and I stress that word, seemingly doing the right things. I said back then, but let's see how long it lasts. And I, and, I, and you know, another I told you so, because it didn't last, it didn't really last too long. And his, his public portrayal his public portrayal and the one that's really getting him in trouble with his with his anti-Semitic left is that he supports Israel. But we've been reporting um, we've been reporting really since November how behind the scenes he's been um, hindering and, and hindering and and manipulating and and, and, and and trying to stop Israel from from going about doing uh, implementing this war the way they need to. And the Biden administration as these months have gone on is really becoming more and more obviously and more publicly to appease again, their, their left wing, their Hamas hugging anti-Semitic left wing. They are becoming more vocal and more publicly trying to sell out Israel for the sake of their Hamas huggers in the democratic party. And I'm going to go through a bunch of different news reports as this, broadcast moves forward but just by way of example the things that were st- that are really starting to to uh, hinder israel in the implementation of this wall just not that long ago i think it was last week or whatever think about a couple of days ago or a week ago at Sh- the senate at, at chuck schumer's direction my one of my pathetic senators in of new york I'm going to get into a bunch of stuff with him a little bit, but Chuck Schumer right now is refusing to pass billions of dollars in military aid right now. Now, they're in the middle of a war. They're an ally, and we've entered into different uh, pledges with them. And you could, you, you could debate whether those, uh, those aid packages and those pledges uh, – or, or good, bad, or whatever. But the point is, once we enter into them, we need to be a nation that keeps our word. We need to. We God. God places a lot of value on vows, and a lot of displeasure on vow breaking. But right now, the Democrats and and Schumer particularly is blocking military aid to Israel that they need. And the Biden administration is, quote unquote, slow walking, slow walking deliveries of ammunition that has already been promised to Israel. This, folks, I'm telling you right now, I know my father. I know him. He's not going to be pleased with this. He is not going to be pleased with this. And he's not pleased with this. And 
this is happening because Netanyahu, as do most Israelis, especially since October 7th, rejects Biden's plan to impose a Palestinian state after the war, which would essentially be rewarding Hamas Hamas for its terror-induced war. And I think I think something else here is happening that is, you know, we've been wondering why the northern border with, with, with Lebanon hasn't really erupted more than it has with Hezbollah. And it does seem like Hezbollah has been reining it in a little bit. They've been provoking. They've been poking the bear. But we were, we were kind of expecting within weeks of October 7th, all out, breaking out, multi-front war. And it's, it's been incremental. It's been, it's been a little bit of that. But nothing, at, nothing yet at the, uh, at the level that we thought with direct, well, I wouldn't say, I should, well, with obvious Iranian, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Activation in the war. Now, Iran is behind everything that's going on over there. My point being is this. I was thinking about this the other day, and I think Israel is getting set up for a major trap. Oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, folks. And we know that peace is coming. That peace is, is all wrapped up in, 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 in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. But um, I think what's happening right now that's so dangerous, and, and our government, this is Biden administration, is, is helping to set the, track, the trap, wittingly or unwittingly, because Israel is running out of armaments. They're, they're running out of uh, wep- uh, you know, missiles and weapons and the missiles for the, for the Iron Dome. And I, I started thinking maybe one of the reasons that Iran has been holding back and Hezbollah has been holding back is to deplete, to deplete Israel. And if they catch wind that we're not going to resupply Israel's military, um, you could see where this is going. Now I'm going to share something a little bit later out of Daniel that I do, I do think this is a foreshadowing and a harbinger of things to come. Jumping ahead in my stream of conscience here, the Bible talks about the time of Jacob's trouble and that all things will, will be fulfilled in God's dealings with Israel after the power, after the strength of the holy people has been completely broken. And as much as we can say that what our government is doing is wrong, and it is, it all is in line with the ultimate outworking of God's purposes. Because God's going to bring Israel at the end of the day to the breaking point where they only have nobody left but God alone. And they shall look upon him. Jesus said, Jesus said to the to Jerusalem when he wept over the city. And this was after Palm Sunday. This was after they had already this was Holy Week. You know, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Sunday. And the crowds came running out to him. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord quoting out of Psalm, I believe it's 118. And a couple of days later, Jesus is weeping over Jerusalem. And he says, truly I say to you, you, will know, you won't see me anymore. You will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But Jesus, they just said that three days ago. Yes, no, there's a, a fuller fulfillment, a final fulfillment of that. When, when Israel... Uh, according to Zechariah 12.10, when God pours out his spirit of grace and supplication and they will look upon him whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourns. You can go to Zechariah 12 and just look, look at that. God's going to pour out a spirit of grace and supplication and Israel is going to repent and come to belief in their Prince of Peace. But it's going to be at the very end when they've got nothing left, when their power has been broken. And I've really jumped way ahead because I wanted to share all of that at the at the near the end of the broadcast. So let me try and get back here right now. But I'm going. I'm just going with the flow of what of what the spirit is is, is fl- how the spirit is directing me right now. Because the Biden administration right now is, I think, walking in unwittingly again 
a uh, a foreshadowing or even a beginning of how this this shattering of the holy people's power will come about in in later days but when our government on both sides of the aisle both republican and democrat when that when when, when they're on both sides of the aisle when they're pushing for a two-state solution which would essentially divide up the land of israel it's not a good thing because god's going to judge those as he says in the book of Joel, again, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. I will enter into judgment with them there on account, on account, on account of who? On account of my people, my heritage, Israel, who they have scattered amongst the nations. And they also have divided up my land and have cast lots for my people. Right now, there's all this talk about dividing up the land of Israel and casting lots for Jerusalem, separating them. This present, folks, this present administration right now is treading on very thin ice in its increasingly hostile position and policies regarding Israel. And I want to share with you, I went, I went down a couple of bunny trails already, but there is a principle regarding those who have betrayed Israel regarding those who have taken up the side of her enemies. There's a principle in the book of Obadiah that I'm going to get to in the next block. But here is the, the linchpin that God promises to those who betray his people Israel. He says this in, in Obadiah 15. Somebody says 115. To, does, Obadiah only has one chapter. So Obadiah 15. God says as and he's speaking to Edom. He's speaking to Esau. And I'll get into this in the next block. But it's a principle here. As you have done to my people Israel, as you have done, it shall be done to you. Your reprisal shall return upon your own head. You, the reward for what you've done against my people will come back on your own head. And folks, this is the, the point. How we treat Israel as a government will indeed come back on the heads of our government. And that in turn will have national implications. So much has already been written and said regarding what happens to the U.S. when it has in times past come against Israel as it tries to divide up its land. Books have been written. One book written by an author many, many years ago, John McTernan. He wrote a book, As America Has Done to Israel. And in his book, John McTernan documents and shows that there is an uncanny direct correlation between an alarming number of massive di disasters striking America at the same time they were coming against Israel. These natural disasters and incidents have always occurred. It seems very odd, folks, very odd coincidences, coincidences of calamities happening in the U.S., just at the same time when our government was bullying Israel over some issue, when our leaders were pressuring Israel to surrender her land for peace, suddenly strange events happened, costing hundreds of lives in our country, costing hundreds of billions of dollars worth of damage. Dozens of disasters have hit America. John McTernan lays this all out in his book. that He wrote this book, I believe, about a decade ago. And these things have always happened Oddly enough, within 24 hours of putting pressure on Israel, these, these disasters in America have included earthquakes, fires, hurricanes, floods, tsunamis, tornadoes. Coincidence? Coincidence? Uh, unrelated? Maybe just unrelated? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Get the book. Get John's book and read it. As America has done to Israel. You decide. It's, but I, I don't know, but it seems very odd that when you look at the data, that it should, it should really elicit some consideration, my friends. And surely, as the USA supports a divided Israel, we can expect God to divide America. As you have done, so it shall be done to you. Stick around, I'll be back with more. Here's Martha Manuzzi.
Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep it right here on Faith FM. Yes, 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 yes. There's something Thank about you, that Jesus. name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's the sweetest name I know. It brings peace to my soul. That was Martha Manuzzi. Welcome back, Andy White here. You are listening to Open Up the Doors, Integrity and Broadcasting here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in Napeague, and WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. And I want to get back into this stuff because I got a lot here. Obadiah said, as this has been done to you regarding when Esau came against his brother Jacob, so it shall be done to you. And I, I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to go out of order the way I got things here because of the way it's flowing. I want to read to you because this is going to set up for the rest of my, my news commentary. I want to read to you out of Obadiah starting at verse 10. Now, let me give you some caveats here. I'm using these verses in Obadiah by way of an analogy, by way of a picture, a type, and a shadow. I want to be clear about that. I am not saying that uh, these apply in the most direct sense to America. Quite honestly, I believe the book of Obadiah is uh, a book that talks about the destruction of Edom in the last days during the tribulation. I actually do believe, and it's a whole other story, story that this book of Obadiah is really, in a lot of ways, the proclamation against what I believe will be mystery Babylon in the last days. Edom. Uh, that's a whole other another whole, is- whole issue. But God is going to judge the Ishmaelites. God is going to judge the the descendants of Esau, and that's that's what Edom is. For those of you who who don't quite uh, might not quite understand the biblical reference here, um, Edom, uh, um, Edom and Esau are the same things. Uh, Esau, when he, when he when he fled from his brother Jacob, he went over into and settled in the area of what is t- modern today modern day jordan down the mount sierra mountain range down into the northwest portion of what is now saudi arabia it was called the land of edom and the descendants of esau are the edomites now you understand that esau was the brother of jacob ishmael was esau's uncle that's where ishmael went as well so uh, Esau uh, married, uh, I believe, if my biblical memory and history re- reminds me, I do believe that Esau married one of the descendants of Ishmael. And so this is where the Arabs come from. And they settled again in this land of Esau, of Edom, I should say. Now, I'm saying all that so you understand this, pe- this passage in Obadiah, because God is now reproving Edom, for how they treated Jacob, their brother, in verse 10. He's saying to Edom, he's saying to Esau, for the violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall come over you, and you shall be cut off forever. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captives his forces, when foreigners entered his gates, Strangers cap, cap, uh, captured Israel. Foreigners invaded Judah. When foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity, nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor should you have spoken proudly against them you should not have spoken proudly against them nor should you have in verse 13 you should not have laid hands on their substance in the days of their calamity you should not have stood at the crossroads to cut them off as they were escaping nor should you have delivered them up to those among them 
who remained in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is upon all nations. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your reprisal shall return upon your own head. Now, I, I, I can't exegete this completely for the sake of time. But I want to draw some analogies here. Basically, what I'm seeing here, violence against your brother Jacob. By way of analogy, we are, we are Israel's closest ally. We, 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 in, in a lot of real ways, America and Israel are like brothers. We both have this Judeo-Christian heritage. We have been Israel's big brother, in a sense, in a lot of geopolitical ways. Again, I'm just trying to draw a picture. But just as Esau betrayed their brother, literally, we are bringing ourselves into a place governmentally of betraying them in a lot of the same ways. I look at this picture here in verse 11. In the day that strangers carried captives his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. I mean, that's such a picture of what happened on October 7th. I'm just saying, again, a shadow, a picture of what happened. It's almost like, it's what's such interesting about this, excuse me, is that when you look at this historically, this was when Babylon was, was destroying Israel. This is when the Babylonians came in. And when you look at this whole thing in Obadiah contextually, the Edomites joined in with the Babylonians to despoil Israel. And God is now rebuking them because, again, the Edomites were technically by bloodline, the brothers, the, the brothers, the, the relatives of the of the Jewish nation of Israel, and I'm looking at this, and I'm, I'm understanding from biblical history, it was God who was allowing the Babylonians. If you go back and read Jeremiah and understand all that scenario from from that when when Israel was carried away captive, God has said it numerous times that He was using the Babylonians to chasten Israel and to destroy Israel um, and and lead them captive. So then you turn around and you say, but God, why, why, are, you then, why are you then uh, rebuking Edom for joining in with them when, it was your, when you were chastening Israel anyway? And the Lord spoke to me, it's like when a parent, when a parent disciplines one sibling over another. If the other sibling comes in and starts uh, gloating and starts... Um, exploiting the punishment of his sibling doesn't the parent get angry you know you 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 punish you punish johnny for you punish johnny uh and i know it's a silly it's a silly example but i'm trying to paint a picture here you punish you punish johnny uh, and you tell him that he can't come out of his room and he can't go on he can't go on his computer for x amount of times for 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 70 years in in, in, in babylon no, for, for seven days follow me with this analogy here but then his, 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 his brother Chuck comes in and goes, ha, 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 ha. He goes barging into the room, takes his stuff, and you can't come out and get me. And, and he starts, you know, joining in. He starts rejoicing over the discipline of his brother, and he starts taking his stuff. In a, in, in a very simple way, this is what's happening here in Obadiah, and God is rebuking them for it. Okay, that's just a simple analogy of what's going on here and I, but i want you to see some of the connections because the biden administration is doing in spirit that very thing to israel right now by um in all kinds of quote-unquote political ways behind the scenes in 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 trying to appease Hamas and trying to appease their anti-Semitic left. This is what we see going on. This is what I see going on. You know, I, the, the head, one headline this week read, Biden attack on Netanyahu causes worst crisis in the history of U.S.-Israel relations. President Joe Biden's endorsement last week of a call by uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer for Israel to oust Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu Marks, this is in the Breitbart, marks the worst crisis in history of U.S.-Israel relations. And you, did you see that, did you see that, uh, 
that speech last week by by Schumer, by the way. Schumer, you know, called from from the Senate floor. Schumer called for new elections to oust. It was a despicable, despicable speech by Schumer. It was election interference with is, is, with Israel. Uh, as want to talk about election interference, as it was done, as you have done, so it shall be done with with you. So you see the principle here. Another headline read: Biden trying to collapse Netanyahu government in the middle of the war. U.S. President Joe Biden is reportedly attempting to force the collapse of the Israeli government, as you have done to your brother, so it shall be done to you. In the middle of a war, we're trying to to um, cut off their 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 their, their ammunition supply. We're, we're refu- we're, 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 like, as I shared in the first block, we're we're re- withholding. Already we're withholding even armaments and military gear that we had already promised them. And I'm seeing this correlation here, folks, by way of biblical precepts and principles. And uh, I just want to say, I just want to say, beware, America, beware, because you're treading on very, very thin ice. I'm going to go to another break really quick, really quick break right now. The fusion of heart, mind, and soul this is open up the doors with Danny White here on Faith FM. WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in that peak. WEGQ 91.7 in Quad. And just by way of uh, broadcast memo, the first hour of this broadcast re airs today, 3 p.m. on Thursday, and also re airs again, 1 p.m. on Saturday. If you'd like to uh, tune in again, if you missed any portion of the broadcast. And even more than that, we upload and archive all of these broadcasts both on my uh, youtube channel and my rumble channel if you've never subscribed to either of those video platforms youtube or rumble just look up andy white open up the doors on either youtube or rumble i'm on both and please subscribe to either one or both i prefer rumble for, for, for a lot of different reasons but that's my preferred channel but i know a lot of people like youtube if you if you uh, subscribe to youtube please hit the subscription I mean the uh, the notification bell. There's a little notification bell there. You can hit, and you'll be notified when all of these uh, archived broadcasts are uploaded to the platform. Um, Rumble does it automatically. Let me get back to some some points here that I'd like to make before this hour is up. Somebody on Facebook commented. And I had alluded to it in the first block, I believe. But someone had commented, when leaders make bad decisions, the people will suffer. And that's absolutely 100% correct. That's why our relationship with Israel on a governmental level is so important and will affect America, even if, the, even if us as a, as a people are supportive of Israel. We will suffer for the for the uh, the decisions of our leaders. And I know this, I, 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 I know that this is going to bristle, this is going to, this is going to bristle the mindsets of many people. I realize that our modern ears and our Western mindset, especially will, will will bristle at the very idea of this and what I'm going to share here, but it's Bible. God oftentimes judges a nation according to the evil and the wickedness of its leaders and the governing precepts and policies that they're enacting in their administration. And just by way of a, just a couple of, just a couple of uh, examples, Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 15 that I will hand them over speaking of his people israel as i said a moment ago god prophesied in the days of jeremiah that he was sending the babylonians to destroy israel to destroy the temple to carry them away captive but listen closely my friends i will hand them over to trouble speaking of israel 
to all the kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh. Because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for what he did in Jerusalem. Now, granted, Israel was apostate. Granted, they were they were they were they were sacrificing to idols all over the place, and that was that that was included in that. But this, we need to let this uh, sink in. I will hand them over because of Manasseh. Nothing can be plainer than that. For the sins. And the crimes of one man. God is going to judge Israel for the sins and the crimes of one man. Just like Adam upset the whole creation with one disobedient act. There's a correlation right there. Second Kings chapter 24 verses 3 and 4 relating back to Jeremiah says, Surely at the commandment of the Lord this came upon Judah. Speaking of the destruction. Surely at the commandment of the Lord, this destruction came upon Judah to remove them from his sight because of the sins of Manasseh. He was the king according to all that he had done and also because of the innocent blood that he had shed for he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. And there are, there are plenty more biblical references to point out to, to point to this this principle and precept that God oftentimes judges a nation according to the evil and the wickedness of its leaders. How much, how much more so when all the leaders of the nation, when, when, when you've got a nation that's filled with a bunch of godless and moral reprobates, how much more will that judgment come, especially a nation who might just be touching the apple of his eye? These are, again, folks, these are, I, I, I'm just sharing from my heart what I'm seeing in the spirit as a, as a serious fore, forewarning of the consequences that America could, could be facing because of an administration that is right now pursuing a betrayal of the nation of Israel in so many different ways. Not only are we hindering them in delivering promised alms to them. We're even, we're even sanctioning. The Biden administration is also slapping sanctions on Israelis who have not been convicted of any crime. He, he, he sanctioned two geographic areas under Israeli control on the West Bank. Now, remember what I read out of Obadiah? Again, by way of principle, let me go back to Obadiah. Thirteen. In the day of their calamity, indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction. In the day of their calamity, nor should you have laid hands on their substance in the day of calamity. In, in type, that's exactly what the Biden administration is doing by sanctioning Israel. Laying hands on on their substance again as you have done so it shall be done to you but to rub more salt in the wounds not only are we withholding aid from Israel financial aid military aid at the same time we're doing that the Biden administration has given really hundreds of billions of dollars to the Iranians, either di directly or indirectly, indirectly by simply not enforcing, simply by not enforcing the, uh, the sanctions that, that uh, President Trump had put on Iran. They've been able to sell their oil to China. They've been able to sell their oil to Russia. They've made billions of dollars in oil sales, which are supposed to be sanctioned. But over and beyond even that, um, just I, I, again, I think it was just last week, he again renewed a $10 billion sanctions waiver against Iran. So in the last couple of months, the Biden administration has basically freed up $26 billion to their Iranians. Think about that, folks. 
not only are we withholding from Israel, who's fighting these groups, who's fighting Hamas, who's fighting Hezbollah, who's fighting um, Iranian proxies in Syria, and now we're withholding from them, at the same time, we're releasing billions and billions and billions of dollars in funds to the Iranians, Iranians, excuse me, who are funneling this money to Israel's enemies. So folks, in a very direct way, I hate to tell you this, the Biden administration is using American tax dollars to fund Israel's enemies. And you know where those tax dollars come from, by the way? Oh, of course you know. They come from you and me. That's where they come from. I don't like the, I don't like the way this calculus is, is, is coming together, folks. I just simply do not like this calculus at all. And it's getting uh, more serious by the day. Now, I've only got a couple of minutes here left in the first hour, and I want to wrap this up. I got other things I want to get to in the second hour. But none of this should come by way of surprise to us. As I alluded to in the first block, Daniel, when he was asking about the visions that he saw in Daniel chapter 12, Daniel said he didn't understand the visions, and he said, how long shall the fulfillment of these, of these visions be? And then the angel says to him, he, 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 the Bible says, then I heard the man clothed in linen, which was an angel, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand, he and, his, and his left hand to heaven, he, he swore by him who lives forever and forever that it shall be for a time, a time and a half of times. Okay, that's the great tribulation at the end of the age before Jesus comes back. And then the angel says, these things are going to happen during this time, time and a half of time. And here's, the, here's the, 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 the connection. When the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be shall be finished you know why you know why when the when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered all these things will be finished it'll go back to what i said in the first block oh jerusalem jerusalem how often how have i wanted to gather you together as a hen would gather together her chicks but you would not have it and you will not see me again until you say blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord all things that are written will be fulfilled and jeremiah chapter 30 says regarding all of the alliances that israel's made with the nations let's include america in that where are there where we are their strongest ally at least in times past but in jeremiah 30 14 he says to israel all your lovers have forgotten you all your lovers have forsaken you they do not seek you jeremiah said in lamentations chapter 1 verse 2 all of her lovers among her lovers, among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherous, treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Book of Lamentations, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 2. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. So I'll say it again in the last minute I have. Thus says the Lord of hosts to the nations which plunder you, Zechariah 2. He who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Brothers and sisters, rue the day. Rue the day that America turns its back finally and completely on Israel, my friends. Because God always has and always will have his hand against every nation that betrays or comes against the land of Israel. I pray America does not find itself on the wrong side of history on this one, but I'm afraid it will because we already have a lot to answer for. But I'm out of time. But keep it right here on Faith FM and I'll be back in the second hour to take your phone calls. 631-725-2069. Give me a call. In the meantime, be brave and be strong and stand fast in the faith. Ah! 